Okay, uh, so this is the Rutland Town Planning Commission, and it's uh, May 4th, 14th, 2020. And we are doing this uh, by Zoom and by phone tonight. So uh, bear with us if you're watching this recording because uh, we have not done this as a group before. So uh, let's start by taking the attendance, just in case uh, we've missed anyone. Um, Howard's on the line. Norm's on the line. Jim is on the line. Sherman's on the line. Andy, Dana, Mary Beth, um, and Jerry, are you there? Okay. Everyone but Jerry. Um, anyone from the public out there? Uh, no, there's the, there's the the nine nine of us. Okay. Okay. So we'll move on to um, approval of the agenda. So moved. That we Second. Second from Andy. Any discussion? All those in favor of the agenda say aye. 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 Anyone aye. opposed? Okay. No public, so no public comment. Um, we'll move on to new business. And so since we met last time, Dana did some research on um, it was National Historic Register properties, right, Dana? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And we've tried to, uh, we've, we've reached out to the Railroad Museum. Um, Bill has done some of that. Um, reached out to um, Frank Chaffee um, as, and I think we got, we just in the last couple of days uh, got another name of uh, Matt Rockwell. Uh, Bill, you want to fill us in a little bit about um, some of the things they've been saying to us? So, I spent a while talking with, with Frank uh, about the building, and uh, he said that the museum does not own the building. They are merely a tenant. Uh, the state of Vermont owns the building. And they rent it from them. Uh, he said that moving the building was uh, probably a ambitious goal. Uh, he said it's a very old building and very fragile. So moving it would be, he said, he said it would be upwards of a probably million dollar price tag to move that building and have it survive. So uh, he said, you know, if we wanted, he could, if we wanted to, to talk to him tonight, we'd have to call him. So uh, we're not able to do that on, on, on this venue. But um, I, I don't know if, if uh, something we want to actively pursue, we'd have to definitely find some serious uh, donors to make that kind of project happen. Well, I was thinking about that. I mean, it may be to our benefit that the state is the owner, um, not in these economic times, but in more normal economic times. Um, I would think they might be interested in making more of that museum. And, and, you know, maybe providing some state funding for that. Possibility. Um, yeah, I, I, I can talk with um, Matt. I can give him a call also. Um, I don't know, Frank's planning on moving to uh, Western New York, so I'm not sure how much longer he's going to be involved with the uh, museum here, but we certainly oh. can talk to some other, other people and see what they have to say. Bill, yeah. I'm having a little bit of trouble hearing you. Could you sit a little, read a little closer, or get this? Hello, coming closer. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Okay. Who you said you were thinking of calling Matt? You said. Yeah, we got another name from from Fred Nicholson. We got another name of somebody who could who could help us. <clears throat> So in the, in the Business Route 4 study, the smart growth one, um, 
for the museum, um, it, it suggests that we work with the owners and operators to gauge their interest and enthusiasm for expanding the existing railroad museum and uh, suggest we review potential sites. So, and then it gives a, a price tag for planning and design. Some of this is 25,000 to 50,000. And then of course it has some suggestions for funders. But I think those two things, I'd still like to talk to museum people. Um, and I think probably the, I'm speaking for the group. But we probably uh, want to get them in and, and, and talk about, you know, whether it's enlarging it, making it more prominent, um, and or I guess uh, moving it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'd be good to see whether there's any interest on their parts to, to any of those. Right. Even if they don't own the building, right? Right, yeah. Barbara, um, last week Dana and I uh, took a ride, bike ride, last weekend. Yep. And um, stopped by and I kind of walked around. And um, I'm only speaking for me, Dana certainly chime in. Um, it's a beautiful sight um, where the pocket part is planned for. I don't know who owns the land. There's a big parking lot. I'm sorry. Oh, there's a big parking lot and then a large grass area that includes this very old bridge. So two things occurred to me. One, it would be wonderful if they could recite uh, the museum. It would just draw people in and it would give it more, conceivably give it more visibility. Um, and, uh, you know, really make that area an attraction, assuming we can, whoever is doing it can deal with the bridge and get funding to upgrade that. Um, because right now it's a, it would be a hazard if it wasn't improved. Um, but aesthetically, it's a gorgeous site. Yeah. You'll read, Dana? Yeah, it was wonderful. We, <clears throat> we looked at a, a space where we could, um, if, if we relocated the building, if the building could be relocated, you could actually see it. You can't see it from the street right now. And so if it were angled, it would serve as an attraction. It would be <clears throat> strategically located near the uh, iron bridge uh, and at the end of the parking lot. And so it would be a great, um, it would great, be a great asset to that area of the pocket park so i did find out that that older unused railroad bridge belongs to earl's truck repair to who? To who? Earl, earl's truck repair that's private property really yeah that 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 bridge went with the property when they bought it so it's uh it it belongs to it belongs to them yeah. So, so there's someone who keeps moving their phone, and, and I'm having trouble following some of the conversation because of it. Uh, I'm having the same trouble. I think it's Howard. I have a, oh, In sorry. Fact, I have a suggestion that when you're not talking, you mute it because I think it might be feedback when people are talking. That's it. So if we well, let's try all muting, and then just try to remember to unmute when you talk. The people on the phones, I don't think, can can mute though. No, they can't. It's, it's coming from it's coming from Howard's landline, so that's why when I muted it, it 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 suck goes away. Oh, okay. So how do we know when he want, he needs to talk? He don't. So I got I got to leave him open because he can't. Does he have no mic? He has no mic on his. Well, maybe he doesn't understand. Maybe his phone's just moving. He may have it in his hand, moving it. Are you hearing any of this, Howard? Quiet now. Bill, does he not have a microphone? He's on a, he has his computer on and he's on a landline. So he's two connections, but the phone one is the one that keeps coming in with the audio. Um, so pardon my ignorance. Is the reason he's on two is because he has no audio on? 
I think because he has no microphone on the computer at home. Can, can you just put him on the phone on his landline, Bill? That's where the interference is. Oh. I can I'm on my cell phone. No, it's it's not not Jim. You're fine. It's not you. It's 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 Howard's phone connection. If Howard muted himself on his phone, from his phone, because he's, he's, on, a, he's on a he's not on a cell phone. He's on a he's actually calling in from his his house landline phone. Yeah. It's my still landline have a mute function. Mute those. Isn't it star six to mute a, a landline? Oh, you did it, Howard. You did it. Yep, you did. <laughs> there we go. I see Howard's phone is being muted on it my screen. Howard. Yeah, it is yeah. now. Okay. Um, Howard, just unmute yourself when you need to say something. Um, but this is much clearer for everyone else. I think it's star six to unmute, too. <laughs> if that's what works, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that makes perfect sense, Mary Beth. <laughs> oh, wait. So, okay, any other um, discussion tonight about the museum? We'll try to get them um, at our next meeting, the 4th, and then we probably want to find out um, who the state agency is and maybe get some folks down from the state at some point, too, to just kind of further this discussion. Yeah. It, it sounds like a, uh, it, it's sounds like a very complicated project to put together but uh you know it doesn't have to happen in an instant <laughs> and it won't right well the, the pocket park is not the simplest one either um with green Mountain, the pocket park is not that simple either so i don't know who owns that land green uh, mountain power owns the grass part and um the whole thing yeah and the parking lot the 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 basically the entire well the parking lot's kind of in the town's right of way but everything else basically the entire project area is owned by green mountain power as part of their right of way as part of their land we're talking about two different things also in this conversation one is one is the railway and the other is the pocket park yeah yeah right and and um, how do people feel about the current location of the museum? Is that just a lost cause, or could it be made? Could you know there be better signage and and you know other ways to make it more prominent so that people know it's there, which is kind of a problem right now. I don't think anyone knows it's there. Sign, signage is tough to get put up. I mean, you have to, it's, it's tough to get permission to put up signs along a, the the state road, and, and that's. And that's business route four because it's in the town. So it's a state road. So they have a sign they put out for their open house when they're there for the museum during on Saturdays, but they can't even do that right now. So um, there isn't a lot of, of signs. So I, th I think it'd be more of just creating the awareness around it rather than signs. I think, you know, if we do, if you do a public awareness rather than signs, you're going to get more, uh, more out of it. Yeah. Yeah. You, and, you can influence signs also some, can't you, Barbara? I'm sorry? I said you have some influence or some mechanism to at least suggest signs through the planning commission, don't you, the regional planning commission? Um, yeah, I think there are some things we could do. And, and I, mean, I still think the connection between, you know, the ownership of the building being the state and whatever restrictions there are on the state highway right now, um, there might be some options there of working intrastately. Yeah, so the signs aren't going up now for Saturday's bill because of the uh, paving? Right. Yeah. Well, let me see here. Let's see if, the, let's see if this works. I'm going to try something here. We're going to see if this works. All right, hold on. Ready? Uh, ah, there we go. Okay. So what? that, you guys see that? Yes. Not yet, but it's working. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, there it is. Very good. So this, there, where you see the river running, like, kind of, like, right to left, 
where it says GMPC on the left hand side, that's the entire project area for the for the pocket park. Oh. oh okay. So I don't know if my highlighter works in this thing or not, but we'll see here in a second. So like this right here is the whole project park area. Right. And that's yeah. that's all up here. Green Mountain Power. Town Hall is up in the uh, yeah, top it's, left corner. Just off uh, the top map. Kind of. It, it, well, this this is Depot Lane right here. And so the Railroad Museum's like right here. I'm not seeing what right here. Oh. No. So but, help us. Where's Town Hall? Where's Town Hall? Hold, hold on. Oh. Um, oops, hang <laughs> on. Let me. Uh, Um, so I mean, I'll, I'll go back to, I'll go back to it here. I'll, I'll, I'll make another one here. Um, it's really good though. Yeah, I know. Right. That's pretty yeah, nice. All right. So there we go. Uh, do you see my cursor? Yes. Yes. Yep. So town office is right here. Okay. No. So kind of rolling town office and then go down the road. Here's Depot Lane. And then down Depot Lane, it's it's right in here. It's actually not even on the parcel map, but it's right there. And that's Vermont Railway property? Yeah. Okay. So that's where the two rail lines come together. So it's not behind the office. It's kind of behind this, this area right here. But they, so you come down Depot Lane into this private road, which is for uh, Karis Reels. So this is Karis Reels right here and then you come down deep lane and, and turn left and the railroad museum is right here in this big wide white spot isn't there a sign somewhere along there they have a fold-up sign they put on the corner of depot lane and business four okay on saturdays for their ah. for their open house yeah okay so, bill yeah what about a what about a brown historic monument sign the state should be able to authorize that. I, I would think so. Um, there is. What registers is it on, Dana? National uh, Register of National Historic Sites, but it has to be registered through the state. That was the research that I did. So it has to be registered. It, it's a federal register, but you have to get it approved by your state in order for it to go back on. So that's, that's one of the tricky things about moving the building. Moving the building might have to, depending on how it gets done, you might have to uh, deregister and, and re-register it with the new location. But it would have to go through the state, I believe, if that's what I said in my email to the so to planning commission. Keep it on state land. Right. If you look at that area right around where it is right now, if you go too far down, you right. cross back over into Karis Reels property where their truck garage used to be, which is like right around here ish. Um, but you get over into private property over there. So anything beyond the tracks is, is Karis Reels land. So there isn't a lot of state land to move it to. So there'd be not only do we have to move the building, but we've got to have some place for it to actually go. So when Norman and I were there, uh, we were having difficulties with the boundaries and there were several big boulders. Do you know where those big boulders are located? That was uh, delimiting a um, parking lot area. Is that on the other side of this track? Uh, hang on a second. I'll, uh... Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's what my car aspires to be like. <laughs> uh, let's, see. Uh, let's see. Okay. There you go. So there's the railroad museum right there. And that's tucked right into the corner of that switch. Right. Which makes this back door. If you open the back door, you're practically on that railroad track. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. So this is not st uh, state property, right? Well, it, it kind of is like in here, like they own where the tracks are. So let me go yep. back. We're south of the tracks where it says Depot Lane. So, yeah. So Depot Lane comes down and the, where Depot Lane comes down yep. is Depot, like everything on this side is state. Everything on this side is Karis Reels. 
everything down here is Karis Reels. So, okay. Like, there's some great property here. Yep. There's this. Yeah. That used yeah. to be Rutland Plywood, but that's not municipal mm -hmm. property. That's too far. That's too far away. Well, um, yeah, I mean it is. But we're, we're, I'm is there any we're, municipal property down that way? No. No, that's. We I guess. Have, I guess the thought Dana and I had was that, without any knowledge of who owned what, and it's still not clear to me, despite your efforts, Bill, and I'm sure it's to me, not you, but. Um, there was around there were these large boulders and I you can see them on there Norman they're white in the green area just below the southern depot lane mark uh, yes yeah, right there Bill that's it those are where the rocks are oh, yep. okay yeah yeah oh yeah so and, this used to be a garage and it, mm -hmm. it, it it may have caught fire several years ago and does not exist anymore um, but that's still uh that's here yep and that's karis reels property it's karis reels property yeah and but it's across the railroad tracks from the next their building yeah yeah so um in, interestingly uh bill norman and i had no idea where the property lines were we were actually asking ourselves questions yeah. Uh, about that and I thought Karis Reels was just on the other side of the river on the same side as the uh, in between the railroad tracks which is CFRELLC yep they're on both sides so they're here and yep. here we didn't realize that well we realized Karis Reels was over here we just didn't know whose property it was down tucked into the corner there yep we thought it might be municipal because of the stones like yeah marking it off well, anyway if you go back to the um, the uh, aerial view, yep, and you and you uh, zoom in. We were thinking that where those rocks are, where it makes that angle uh, on the left side, yep, right there, uh, going north and then heading uh, east. We were thinking that the best location for the railroad uh, station would be Caddy Corner from the uh, cornerstone in the lower. Uh, left heading uh, northwest and so you draw your cursor up to the left yep that way yep. that's where we thought the um, the rail <clears throat> the rail museum would be most uh, visible from the street from not route four from depot lane well yes from yes from route, well from business route four because if you look you go down Depot Lane, and we could see the cars going right by Depot Lane, yeah, and they would be able straight, to see the rail museum view, yeah. if it were in that corner. Yeah. yeah. And that's the old garage you're saying, Bill. Right here is where it was, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, let, let's uh, see. if Howard, do you have anything to add here? He's still muted. Hold on. There we go. Howard? Now try it. Howard, do you have um, do you want do you have any pearls of wisdom for us? Uh, no, I'd say, but, but Bill Bill covered it very well. Um, it's you know it's what it is. It's Karis Reels owns all that property, and and then uh, Earl's Truck Repair owns the bridge. Um, but it's a, it's a tough move. You know, when you talk about being able to see the railroad from route. From business route four, I don't know. You're, you're not going to see it unless you start driving down Depot Lane. I mean, it's it's uh, it's something that you've got to be driving down Depot Lane to to be able to visualize that thing. So I'm I'm not sure how much greater exposure it's going to create by putting it down there, as far as business route four goes. Well, I I don't know either. Um, I, I my sense is that if we could get that property either by purchase lease or donation that the setting is just much more attractive uh, we hit it on a day where the sun was as bright as today the grass mm -hmm. had just been cut i mean it was as bucolic as you can imagine and um it, it just bespoke of park and if yeah. that were yeah. the focus and there were a few picnic tables around it and somehow 
we could get more publicity, it looks like a, you know, something to think about. I mean, it, it is complicated. Yeah. It certainly yeah. is complicated. I don't think heightened visibility, I mean, there's, is the first thing on the agenda to sell. Um, no, absolutely not. I agree with you, Norman. And, um, but the, the overall appeal is significant. And if you take, if you take five, five minutes just to go down Depot Lane and look at that grassy area, and it comes around, um, Bill, yep. is the, um, it's hard to know which direction, but it comes around as the entire grassy area along the perimeter of the parking lot, for lack of a better word, well, over here on the right, on the right where, the, where, the, um, where the train is now. Okay. There's what appears to be a parking lot there. Right. And then there is this grassy area. Yeah, right. Then there's this grassy area that surrounds it both on the sort of west side of um Billy's back where I was earlier. Depot Lane and then here. Yep. And then then bordering here. the bridge and then off to the right some. Is that whole property owned by that whole grassy area owned by Karis Reels? Yeah. So, yes, you, you see the right hand side now. So, Karis Reels, this is their plant. This is where the truck garage is. They own a strip right down through here, all the way. This is their bolt manufacturing plant, which is. Yeah, we went by that. Norman and I went by that. Yep. That's that building there. Is this building here? So, yep. they own that goes right into here. And then the, the bulk of this is all belonging to the former Rutland Plywood Company. So it's all, it's all, it's, it's owned between Karis Reels, uh, Mariah Group, and the railway. Yep. And the railway, well, think, they got, well, and they're not going to get, I mean, the railway is not going to give up anymore. That's, that's, they're, they're, that's what they have. And that's, that's what they're going to keep. So. Well, and the plywood factory area is obviously for sale. It is for sale, yep. That's the Mariah group. Yeah, but yeah. Like, like you're saying, I mean, you know, the part of the, and I, I, don't, I mean, I, I don't know how, how many of you have actually been inside the museum, but it's pretty neat. And there's windows. So, so this building right here, so this is, this is the original train station. This is a caboose, which they yeah. are working to restore yeah. slowly. This is the this is the building that has their they have an operating model train layout in there yep. and there's a window in that room and when trains go back you can see them and so I mean that that's a pretty neat thing to have a train museum right there to have operating trains go by so you know it's like like you know, we've said it it shouldn't go too far from where it is because that's part of its history is that it's right there on the tracks. Well, so, I, so Bill, did you say that part of the old um, train station is, is being used by the museum? Yeah, so this this part of the building right here, uh -huh. that's the, this, this is the original train station. Right. And there is, a, there is a museum in there. I mean, they have artifacts, they have old railroad memorabilia, they have some really neat stuff there. And then this dark side, this dark part off the end here, Get a little closer. This this dark part off the end right here is an addition. That's where they have their uh, model train layout, an operate an operating layout in there. Yeah. So so is I, I guess I'm going back to <laughs> the the idea of moving this seemed to have come uh, been been introduced without any discussion with the the uh, railway association or are the members to see if they're interested in it. Is that correct? Well, it was a study. It was right. a study, Chairman. But I mean, the study was, didn't, didn't involve them. No, no, the study, right. The study yeah. was done, done, done for us in West Rutland. It's like, right. here's a list of things you can pursue. Right. And, and my only reason to bring that up is I think the next step is to talk to the, the members of the 
the association to see where they are on this because there may be some reasons for keeping it there. Yeah. That we're not aware of. Yeah. And uh, another thing might be that uh, they're looking for financial help to promote it better. Yes. And maybe that's a role that can the town can play there. So that, can you see that picture better? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's kind of handy. Look at that. So <laughs> holding. I can't. I can't move the picture. But that's where the that's the new addition, and this is the museum part of it. And then there's a caboose, right, right off the left hand side of that picture. There's a there's an old caboose there that they are working on restoring. So, so that's that's what they've got. So it would it would mean in moving that entire facility. Yeah. Around. It would okay. be a significant undertaking. I don't know whether the consultants thought about the money involved. Um, hmm. I thought we, Dana, when we went there a couple of years ago, didn't we go into the caboose and wasn't that part of the... We, we went into the main building. I don't remember if we went in, We might have gone into the caboose because that fellow was really quite enthusiastic about the rail museum. But I do remember coming out the back door and and taking a step and you can see it the the back door is white uh at the on the uh, left side right by the telephone pole yep yep and when you step out that door you're practically on the tracks yeah you can see that yeah. it's yeah i mean there, there right is a there. safety uh issue here right and they they know that the people who operate the rail museum i think they have signage inside um norman if uh, correct me if i'm wrong that says uh operating danger uh, operating uh, rail tracks within six feet or something like that. <laughs> and, and there's a big sign uh, inside on the other side of that white door that says basically mm -hmm. don't open the door. Okay. I, I don't okay, everybody. Okay, Norm. Um, let's, uh, I think that's enough agenda. discussion on this. I, I think, you know, the next step will be to, to get some members yeah. of the association in and uh, just to uh, acquaint them with the study recommendations, let them acquaint us with what their mission is and, and some other details. So we'll the, work on that for June 4th. Sounds good. Okay. So Barbara. Yeah. Uh, the, the first thing I think that we could pursue that would have minimal cost and maximum benefit would be uh, looking at what it takes to get a historic brown sign, um, you know, showing that it's, I don't know, a half a mile uh, in each direction, and then maybe a sign pointing to the railway museum right at the corner of Depot Lane. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because if we can get that from the state and it's owned by the state and the state wants to help us promote uh, the, the rail know. museum, then it would be a great partnership and cost us very little and show people that we're actually working towards uh, promoting our uh, historic heritage and uh, the value of the uh, uh, local uh, artifacts. So Yeah, and maybe some information when the pocket park um, happens, maybe some information down there, you know, right. head, up the, head up the hill and take in the museum. Bill, thank you very much for the, the tour. You really raised the bar, Bill, and uh, our expectations now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was great. Okay, let's move on um, to the um, stormwater map, ordinance map that uh, Watershed Consulting has done for us. Hmm. Um, so uh, I, I know there's some, some bugs in there. And so I'd like us to spend as much time as we need to go, go through the map, play with it, and so we can get back to Watershed and let them know uh, what needs to be fixed. There is no rush because um, we can't pay for this yet. We cannot pay them for their services uh, because of the spending freeze with the town. So, um, that's unfortunate for the consultant, but uh, it gives us a little more time to to look at this map. And I know, I mean, there's 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 some weird things. There's some weird blue polygons that are just kind of 
show up in the map. I don't know what they are. They oh, are you talking about the like, inclusions of the watershed boundary? Yeah. I think those are just um, just whatever software the is used to come up with the watershed boundaries. I think that's this, a state layer problem. Not, I'll, I'll look into it, but I think that's based on just the watershed map from the state and not something that they're doing. Yeah. Just because, you know, just, um, I think whatever they use to come up with the watershed boundary, they use, you know, where the land drains. Yeah. And uh, anyway, I'll, I can look into that more, but it might not be what, something that they did. Okay, okay, yeah, we can always ask them too. Well, what does everybody think about this map? Do you think it's gonna be useful? So, so I had, it when I looked at it, when I started to look at it, I had expected to, for the map to have uh, a, a little more information in it to let me know where I was, like maybe street names, hmm. or in fact, ideally, there'd, there'd be some number associated with each property line, each, each area of property. But in looking at it, I found I had to have a good idea of, of the area in order to find what I wanted on the map. For right. instance, I looked for my house and I had to know where it was and to know where to go oh. on the map. You can, you can search it though and type in your address. Ah, that's what I didn't do. I didn't know that. So, that's in the top. upper left. Yeah. The upper left, yeah. there's a box you can just type in. And it'll, it'll give you every address in the country that has that number and street name. I, I saw the box and, and didn't register. Yeah. Huh? So, Barbara, this is Dana. Um, I, I went in and I clicked around and uh, I was expecting more under landowner resources and stormwater ordinance. And a lot of them went to the same document. And this one document's 25 pages. I don't think that's terribly helpful because I'm not sure who's gonna read 25 pages uh, when they're looking for something that's quick and easy. Um, so they, are you referring, uh, Dana, are you referring to, it's, um, it says, okay, on this parcel, um, you are impacted by, by uh, ar sections or articles four and seven. The Ordinance order. articles four, five, six, seven. If you click on a property, yeah, and I'm clicking on the big rectangle uh, in red um, up uh, in the, um, on the eastern side where it's, it's the top of Mussy Brook. And it says one of 10. I had some difficult, I mean, I had some difficulties navigating through with this. Uh, at one point, it was covering the uh, the pop up was covering the actual uh, properties, so you couldn't see them. Mm. And some of them just seem weird. Like when I click on four of ten, I get all of this blue highlighting up, well away from the um, uh, the property, and I can't see what property I've clicked on. And then what it do says you mean by four? What do you mean by four of 10? Well, if you click on it, Mary Beth, if you click on one of the red areas, mm -hmm. you're going to get a number. And you, you I, can scroll through and it says one of 10, two of 10, three of 10, four of 10. It's pages of information. Oh, on the same property? No, is it? Yes, yeah, it should be. So on that property, it means that there are 10 things that apply. No, it, it means, um, it can mean a combination of things. Um, it, it, I don't know if it always goes back to the ordinance, but it, it, should, it has a separate page of information for one, two, three, and on. And each one of those pages should be giving you different information. They should be. Yeah, not much, not really. A lot of it's the same. So I see something, I'm seeing something different like if i so you're in the top right property above musty brook is that right the top the right property right it's it's on the eastern boundary with mendon yeah okay so when and i it says, four, it says 
uh, one of 10, well, it depends on which slide you're on, but multiples of 10, something of 10. So the first one that says for one of 10 says stormwater ordinance zone, stream buffer, applicable stormwater ordinance articles, four, five, six, seven. And then land odor re resource, which pops up uh, the stream corridor protection. Yeah. Barbara. Yep. Do you see what I have in mind when I click on it? It's You've totally got the small box, different. the small box that's right by the red triangle, uh, red um, polygon. But then you also have something else popped up in the background. In the background. No, on to the right. Do you have two pop ups? Oh, and then I have a legend, but I only have one pop up. Uh, let's see. What's up in, what's up above your pop up? My pop up looks like yours right by the uh, red. Yeah. Uh, what's up? Um, and what's up above it? What's behind it and up to the right? That bigger pop up. Oh, that's the legend. That's what? The legend. The legend. You the know, map. showing the oh, 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 um, oh, elements yeah. of the map. You know, yeah, I, for some reason I don't have that, but maybe you're zoomed in more and that's when it will pop. Nope. Yeah. You must have to click on something to get the legend. Okay. Yep, I did. I Sorry. clicked on the yep. I'm getting what Mary Beth is getting. Okay. You actually have to click on the legend in the three uh horizontal bars over to the left under the that opens up the legend, yes. Like it, yeah, it mm -hmm. doesn't okay. up automatically. Oh okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I see that okay. So we'll we'll be noting all this stuff. Norm, did you have a question? Yeah. Um, my sense what? is that this is not very clear at all, and somebody, a citizen who is suddenly faced with the problem, will have a lot of difficulty working with this in its present form. Um, I could, frankly, I'm looking at something now that says one of seventy-six. Now, my assumption is that 76 different owners within that area. No, no, yeah. I doubt there would be 76 owners of one parcel. No, I, well, that, that's my concern. Is it, I thought it applied to a neighborhood. You're saying it applies to a parcel. What is the 76 in that? Oh, pieces you want of to information on that parcel. I'm sorry? I think it's pieces of information on the parcel. Because some are one of two, some are one of four, some are one of ten. Well, I went through that. Um, and I don't know why it's different. I mean, if you start off and say, and I click through five or ten or fifteen, and I just okay. was, the point is it's confusing. Yeah. Um, and we're all obviously, you know, I, I confess I'm probably the most technologically handicapped. But um, having said that, I'm sure I'm not alone. And if it's, this is designed for the average citizen to find out whether he can build a shed or not, or her shed, or their shed, um, I'm not sure this does it. Okay, so this is not the end all for everyone's. Uh, for information for for people and and this ordinance Th this can be used by bill and howard as well when they get questions people call in and say you know do i fall in this watershed um so you know it's it's probably not designed for the average citizen it's another option to offer our residents and probably the more technically savvy of them to to just get the information faster or, or, or get a bigger, a, a better picture of whether, or an optional picture of whether they fall into these areas. So, so what I would suggest, if, Barbara, is if, if we're going to use this as some type of a tool, an educational tool, that somebody do a, um, a YouTube video demonstrating mm -hmm. what those boxes are and that there be a link uh, somehow yeah. placed on the, uh, on the website for people to understand how to navigate it. I okay. nominate Mary Beth. <laughs> and not what? Not Mary Beth? I, nom I nominate Mary nominate. Beth. <laughs> you nominate Mary Beth. I'll second that. 
Okay. Those nominations <laughs> closed. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Barbara. I hate YouTube videos, but anyway. <laughs> as long as I'm just talking well, and showing, I don't care. <laughs> there could just be some some um, some written instructions on if you want to do this, here yeah. are the steps. Uh, right. Not necessarily cover everything that people would want, but some of the things that that we know to come up. Yeah, we might be able yeah. to work with a consultant a little bit on this too, yeah. if we have any money left over. Barbara, let, let me follow up what we were talking about for a minute, if I may. If if what I'm pointing to um, is, and it, it highlights, it, it's in the middle of a, looks like a subdivision. I'm, it's on the um, east side near near Menden, near the what I assume is the Menden border and Town Line Road. If there are 76 pieces of information applying to this one parcel that's overwhelming right uh, i don't think there is norm i don't think i think that's probably an error well i don't know but well um, i just found 60. yeah uh, it's not it's not isolated you move that cursor they're actually just a minute norman there are actually 60 pages there of information in that information box i'm checking there are Five. Uh, it's highlight. It's doing the same thing it was doing on mine when I had one of ten. Uh, now it's actually moving around parcels. So yeah. these parcels are out, out outside of the um, actual uh, buffer zone, I think. And so uh, I, it's clicking from par small parcel to small parcel. So Norman yeah. must have clicked on something that is in the um, I'll call it um, the beige area where they're all closely clustered together. Yeah. And it seems to me like it's bouncing between parcels. Yeah, yeah, I, I experienced that too. So there's yeah. somehow there are 60 pieces of information clustered into a whole area. So right now I'm on page six of 60 yeah. and it says storm ordinance zone Rutland town, applicable stormwater seven, but it's got a whole um series of blue lines going up through rutland town to the north and and spreading out so i don't know okay okay um so wh why don't everybody um play with this write down your observations and we've got three weeks next meeting we'll Put this list together for watershed. Um, it's hard, if it's if hard you could to see put... some trends of errors out there, that'd be great. What, Norm? Well, what I was going to say is that it's hard, it's awfully hard to describe. I think Dana it hit the nail on the head, and I'm not sure even, um, I still think it. it it has to do with the parcels in the area. I'm looking one of 76. Each time I click it, now I'm on eight. This little yeah, we, we just we just talked about that, Norm. We just talked about that. Okay, um, it's it's jumping around and adding um, information to that box. So that's an error. That's an error. So we've noted that. Okay. Okay. And so you know, we've got we've got more than 400 parcels here. So it's it's going to be, it's not going to be the easiest thing to navigate. And some of the, and many of the parcels are very small. I guess it's yep. very suburban in there. So Howard, did, do you have anything you want to add or Jim? No, this is no. Howard. I guess, I guess not, not at this time. We'll just take and play with it and, See what uh, shakes out of it. Yeah, that should we be looking for? Looking for Howard. This is Dana. You know, I, I can play around with all kinds of things, but unless I know what I'm looking for, I can't give uh, cogent feedback or intelligent. I can't even formulate intelligent questions.
Well, um, do a review of uh, just a, a short, and you know, don't spend a lot of time with this, do a review of this online feature and what you like about it, what doesn't work for you. And let's, uh, let's start there. Yeah, so let me, let me offer something that I can uh, at least throw out to the group in terms of seeing whether I'm on the right page or not. <clears throat> um, I like the color shadings that go along Moonbrook and Mussy Brook. Uh, but what I can't tell is, I can't tell what is within the, um, the buffer zone and what is within the watershed and what's not. They're different colors. And what's in the buffer zone are the parcels that touch those two brooks. That, that border those brooks. Yeah, that's what I thought, the red ones. I, I don't have it right in front of me, but. It, it's the colored ones as opposed to the, <clears throat> uh, the, the non-colored ones, the, the beige ones. Yeah. And, and, and so, but it doesn't really say that. It just refers to the ordinance. And it would be helpful if it said that they were in the buffer zone as opposed to the uh, watershed, the general I watershed. I thought it did. I thought it did. I'll have to double check that. It does in the legend, but it doesn't when you click on it. Right, and that's my point. I mean, you have yeah. to do extra things to find out that information. And what would be helpful to me is it says, you are in the buffer zone, or you are in the watershed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, and, and so that's, that's, my, that's the biggest contribution that I can make. Well, just, just if you remember the ordinance, there are only, there are only a few, you know, you can tell by those numbers whether you're in the buffer zone or not. You know, if, if, you, if you get familiar enough with the ordinance, which, you know, we don't That's work with very often. Be, people who might be going in to try to find out for the first time aren't going to be familiar enough with the ordinance. So what would be helpful is if the pop-up box says in the first thing, this is what applies to you, and then you can refer to the ordinance and gain, gain more information. Because um, are there things on this map that are not even affected by the ordinance? No. So I click over on the complete west side of town and it's still referring me to the uh, stormwater ordinance for Rutland Town. Well, that's because it's a general stormwater ordinance. Right, right. But yeah. it doesn't say that you're not affected. It's, it doesn't say that you're not in the, um, in the, um, uh, this property is not in the buffer, nor is it in the watershed. Okay. But okay. It, it seems to indicate that that it still applies to you. Okay. The problems so, like that could possibly be the at least minimized if there's some instructions that go along with some written instructions or yeah. directions in using this. Uh, I I wouldn't expect it to be anything where you could pick it up and just use it without having some direction. Especially me because I looked at it and didn't realize I could type an, an address in. Uh, okay. So if I'd had a write-up, I would have known a little bit more and could have gotten a little further. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Is everybody clear with that? We'll just we'll come back to this next meeting and and hopefully have some clear um, comments and suggestions for watershed consulting. Okay. This was helpful. This discussion was helpful. So, yeah, uh, just remember, this is a tool. This is a tool. Yeah. It's, you know, we don't expect it's it, it's not going to answer all the questions these these residents these landowners have, but it just gives them an idea that it should give them an idea of whether they are affected by the ordinance. Or not. And that's my whole point, Barbara, that if, they, if it lets them know that it applies to them or not. So, for example, I just typed in my address, and it brings up my, my house and the Google map and everything, and it just gives my address. It doesn't give anything uh, related to the stormwater ordinance. So you, and, and You're then, not affected at all by the ordinance, Dana. Uh, right. No, no. <laughs> not at all. Right. But it should say that. Well... Uh, I guess my question. That would is, be a whole lot more work, Norm. 
uh, and, and probably another 1,500 times three. So, uh, so what I'm, I guess I'm looking at is uh, if I go over onto the west side of town, uh, I'm wondering why it pops up. I, I don't know what, I don't even know what this address is. Um, so I can't tell you. Well, well, Dana, one of our instructions is going to be, you know, if you live on the western side of town, don't, don't even bother with this map. This is, this does not pertain to you. Well, that's what I thought, but it's still popping up stormwater ordinance as opposed to just popping up the information about my, my address, which is it's on the It's not going to have your information. We, we didn't pay for that. I'm not sure what you mean. <laughs> Robert, you know, I think Sherman, Sherman has a point. I can. I'm, I'm going to have to go, folks. I'm, oh, sorry, Andy. Okay. But I, I, I wish I could save on with for the discussion and further. But my son is here from Las Vegas, and and I, uh, we have a commitment to okay. go to this evening. I didn't okay. expect it to go so long. It's good seeing everybody, and I'll probably see everybody in person on the fourth. Take care. Take All care. Right. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night. Uh, so I guess what I'm trying to figure out. Because I can put all of this into into uh, some succinct uh, document, but I need to know what I'm focusing on. And so this property that I clicked on over on the west side of town towards towards Proctor uh, shows stormwater ordinance zone. Dana, town. Dana, uh, Dana, the map expands. You can expand it, and it'll show you California. I Our understand city. that. I mean, it just so what what we. What we did with this map is we took the comments from the public meeting in October where people who lived in that area, they were the ones invited to that meeting, live in the watershed, said, we don't know whether, you know, what applies to us and we don't know whether we fall into the, the general watershed or in the buffer area. So we'll need to give instructions that this map only contains good valid information for those who live in those two two areas it's really one big area but the, the watershed but so it's not for the town as a whole it's just for that subsection of the town i know that i know that that's what the intent is but i'm telling you that there are things in there that are outside that are confusing because it still references it and the person probably is not in the watershed nor in the in the um, uh, buffer zone, and that should be removed because if I go to my property, it says nothing, which is great. That's what it should say. But you um, wouldn't be directed to that. You would, if if you're not in those areas, you you wouldn't be directed to use it. I mean, it's it's a tool that's only to be used by people in those areas. Well, maybe what they should do is just make everywhere that's not part of the ordinance affected area just make it black. So when you go to your property, you get a message, you know, or something, or you can see that it doesn't apply to you. Maybe well, not. Or dark well, gray point, Mary, or something that's very obvious, not like gray green. <laughs> well, well Mary, that's my point, Mary Beth, that only those things within the uh, watershed area demarcated by the blue line should have any information around the ordinance. Everything else should just mm -hmm. give the property address. I, I well. And just say clearly that you're not affected. Yeah, you know. whether it's safe that or not. I mean, somebody could be looking to buy a property. It's not just for the property owners who, who are here. Somebody who's coming from uh, New Jersey. But I'll pick on New Jersey. You know, I think that they want to run, they're looking at ahead, property. Norm. Just a minute, Norm. They're looking ahead, at properties, and, and they see this uh, blue area on the map, the, and this is go to our website. It should, it should be showing things about that, only about the watershed area. And not about the rest of the town. That's all. That's my point. So if you if that information is important, I'll be happy to put that down into some type of a document. But if it's if we're not going to if that's what people don't want to know, then I'm not going to waste my time. <laughs> well, yeah, I was thinking more of like bullets <laughs> in 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 this list that we come up with. Norm. Um. Thank you. What I was thinking. I think Sherman has the right idea. I think and. A lot of our concerns could be answered by a one-page introduction. Uh, 
this applies to. This right. is not intended to do this. This mm -hmm. is not, if you have questions after reviewing this, you must, or after reviewing this, you must confirm your understanding uh, with the town administrative officer or whoever is in, involved in, for, in the enforcement of this so that its scope is limited and we're not tied to it. It's a tool. We have to make it clear that it is a tool. It is not an answer. And I think that has to be said in the introduction. If I understood Sherman's remarks, um, I think that's what he was suggesting. I like it. I don't like to tell him I like it, but I like it. Okay. 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 I have another, as I've been playing around, Barbara, I'm going to share something else with you. If you are on this map of Rutland Town and you click on it, anywhere in Rutland Town, it will give you that same information and it will have anywhere from one of two to one of 25 links. If I click on the area that's supposed to be where my, my house is located, it pops up. If I type in my address, and so I'd like to know from Bill, what? give me an address, Bill, or, or Howard, in that buffer zone that you know that I can type in because it's not showing if you type in an address. So if I go and type in my address, it does not show this information. If That's I click on thing. the map, if I click on the map, to the, the area where my location is, is I get the same dialogue box that says stormwater ordinance zone for Rutland town. Man, so if somebody can give me a, 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 an address in that buffer area, I will click on it and see what happens. Give me a second. I'll get you an address here in just a second. Uh, Thanks. Uh, try uh, um, 533 Gleason Road. 533 Gleason Road. Oh, what's going on here? Hang on. Just lost my box. Gleason. R O A D Rutland, Vermont. Nope, doesn't pop up. What address was that, Bill? You have to uh, click on it. Five thirty three Gleason Road. Is it is it a, a residence? Yeah. You have to you if you click on it, you get more information. And then it says stormwater ordinance zone more info but it doesn't it doesn't give you the one of however many how about trying like 23 joshua place that kind of comes to my mind i i think that might be a number right on a brook and that's uh yep let's see 23 joshua place yep it's right by the brook one of two oops one of two, 23 Joshua Place. Yeah, stream buffer. Then it pops up. You have to click on it twice. Then it pops up and it gives you applicable stormwater ordinance articles, four, five, six, and seven. Gives you landowner resources and uh, stormwater ordinance link. So it does say there after you've clicked on it twice, it's in the stream buffer. What do you mean click on it twice? So you, when you put it, when you click on the, when the address pops up, Mm -hmm. You have to click, it will pop up with a little box giving you the um, information around the address. Mm -hmm. Then you have to click on it to open it and then it will show you your, um, oops, what happened? That sounds pretty normal. I'm just saying that <laughs> to navigate and know what you're doing, we've just spent, I've just spent talking to you probably uh, 20 minutes. And I had previously gone in and tried to navigate through it. So if somebody is expecting to get information from it, we need a little bit uh, more to help guide them to find the information. Okay, that's going okay. I think we've, we've, we've said that uh, okay. several times now that yep. we need some instructions um, to go along with this. So that's duly noted. 
Any, uh, any other uh, general comments about this? I mean, it, it is going to be a little bit hard to play with. I mean, you do need some actual addresses. So, I mean, if you want to, you know, uh, maybe Howard, if you could send us out some sample addresses to, to try in that area. Um, I was wondering about the, the Gables area, but I didn't know the exact address up there. Well, it's, it's Heritage Hill Place is the one that's got the corner of it right there. And I think Howard has mentioned, I mean, when we did the mail, when we did the mailing, uh, we aggregated all of those parcels into yeah. one. Um, and so we might have to tease those apart now. Um, that, that, that's one of the things I was thinking we'd have to double check. Because you know, if we have just one big area, this ordinance or certain articles of it may not apply to the whole, you know, combined parcel mm -hmm. at Heritage Hill. So, Howard, are you okay with that? Maybe just sending us a list, some sort of a list of addresses in the watershed that we could play with. Sure, I, I, I'll do that. No problem. It's not too. That's not a big deal. No, it isn't. I'll do it for you. Yep. Okay, thank you. Hey, Howard, can I ask for a couple of addresses that are up on the either the northwest or northeast side of town so that we can see something that's not in the buffer and what information pops up there? <laughs> okay, so you want me to include... You want me to include some addresses that will that are not in a buffer area? Right, just so um, people can compare. Yeah. Uh, that might be confusing, Dana. Um, let's just get a list from Howard of what's in, what's covered by the ordinance and, you know, just play around, you know, just put some other addresses you must know, the people you must know in town, put their addresses in. Okay. Look, look at the phone book or something. Yeah, we need to also come to some agreement at some point on what we expect this to be. And, and Dana, it sounds like you want it to be everything for everyone, where anyone who signs yeah. on can get some answers. And I think that... It should be limited to those people who are in the buffer zone or, or right. And that information that does not apply to the buffer zone or to the um, watershed should not, it, it shouldn't, it shouldn't pop up with information that seems to imply that there's a stormwater ordinance apply applicable to your property. And I would That's say that anyone who's, anyone who's using that address shouldn't be using it. Shouldn't be using it. So it's it's a matter of opinion. That's why I say we should agree on it because I disagree with you. That's all. Yeah, and it, that might be. Um, and correct me if my if I'm wrong, Bill or Mary Beth. That may not be a hard hard thing to fix. Just to right. To I mean, we we could we mask could back, those areas somehow. We could go back to the the ones that are helping create this and say like, you know, how hard would it be to block out all the addresses it doesn't apply to? So. People go look and it doesn't even show up. Like if you yeah. search and get no result, you're good. And, right. You know, just just yeah. the rest of that data. So we don't. Know. I mean, it's because my house says stormwater ordinance zone Rutland Town. Yeah. And it says stormwater ordinance link, and it gives it to me. We don't want to make it more confusing. Nope. Okay. Okay. I think we thank you, Howard, and thank you, Bill, and thanks everyone for uh, going through that already. And we'll just spend a little more time on that, if you don't mind, um, before we, uh, you know, combine all of our comments for Watershed. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is, um, several of you have asked from time to time, you know, what our budget to actuals look like. So I just sent those out. Uh, we're not big spenders. Um, and we're, our budget's in, in fine shape, uh, freeze or no freeze. Um, we've got approximately 6,000 left in our budget, um, which should, as far as I know, um, we're still, you're still getting paid for meetings, right, Bill? Yes. Pay, payroll's not affected. Okay, this so, expires June 30? Yes. Uh, Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, well, it goes to the end of the fiscal year, and I don't think they've decided what's going to happen the next fiscal year, Bill. Yeah. Uh, 
Carrie had said at the meeting uh, last night that that our um, the, the the taxes coming in are on par with years past, and we still have a couple of days of uh, postmarks to go for people to still send them in on and be considered on time. So so far, we seem to be doing good with with tax payments on side of it. The concern from the select board um, mm -hmm. it was the one percent local tax option, which is about a million dollars a year that we don't have to pay in taxes. So that that's where that concern was coming from. Yes. Did, they, did they give any indication of how far behind the town was and in, in that piece of revenue? We, well, that was talked about at the previous board meeting and uh, we had projected $1 million for, for, for local tax income. And before the, this whole thing put everything to a stop, we were actually going to exceed that number for, for this fiscal year. So uh, things were, were looking good. Uh, and they, it seemed like they anticipate it being on track, but that's, that's an office across the hall. You'd have to ask to be sure. So <laughs> You had your chance earlier today. <laughs> Shush. <laughs> okay. Any questions on that? Um, is it frozen through the end of the year, or is it uh, frozen temporarily, fiscal or year. what's the what's so that? Fiscal year. Going it's, fiscal it's, year. Yeah, it's six, frozen through the rest of the fiscal year. Six weeks. So no, no expenditures other than payroll, unless they are emergency, will uh, be authorized. Yeah, yeah, they, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, a, a, a more than five hundred dollars. The board is requesting to come to them first, but they are still making purchases. Um, the the fire department got a grant, and they needed to spend the money, pay for it, and to get reimbursed. And they authorized the expenditure last night. So, and it was like ninety eight hundred dollars. So they are still spending the money, being mindful that you know there's budgets for this year and budgets for next year, and we don't want to stop spending all necessarily everything out of this year's budget because we can't overload next year's budget. Because if we don't have the money coming in then, which the point of putting it off now is to help pay for it then, then we don't want to end up in the same boat. So the highway department's the only department that gets to carry over their budget surplus year over year everybody else goes back in the general fund, which is what they're trying to help protect. So we don't go into a deficit and have to right. raise taxes next year to cover the deficit. Right, because what happens with the, um, the, the, the surplus in the F, FY, whatever we are, 20 uh, budget gets turned into revenue for the FY 21 budget. It goes into the capital improvement fund. So we, the town, town is not obviously not for profit, so any money not spent goes into the capital improvement fund, uh, which they've used for things like the office remodel and, and things like that. So it goes into that for capital expenditures. Okay, but it, so it's not going to actually help offset uh, the general fund budget for FY21? Uh, not, for, not for July 1, no. That's based upon tax revenue and things like that. So that's, so there, there, there's, there's, the, the, I, I'm not entirely versed on all this, but I, I do know enough to be kind of dangerous. So uh, <laughs> ne next year we get we get into July one, and we're we're being funded by tax income right now because the next tax payment is like September. September. So the money we're getting right now helps us. We we have a there's an opening fund. Yeah, so town has an opening fund for July one that we start spending money out of. That the tax payments in September help to recover that opening fund. Right. We start spending. So it's your it's your, it, it's your cash flow balance that is, yeah. allows you to operate. Where some towns have to borrow that money to make that July and August gap, we have it sitting in a bank account, and then we spend it, and then we put it back in September. Because the the um, the surplus goes into that capital fund, and you can use that as a slush as a. Um, as a pass-through fund while you're well, waiting for it to they're, they're, they're two different things. So the capital improvement fund is set aside for 
like they did um, a roof extension on the transfer station. Yep. It was out of the capital fund. So rather than absorbing a larger expense on a, on a, on a, on a department budget, the, the town has a fund that, 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 that pays for that. So obviously you have to have surpluses year over year to, to fund it. That. And they don't want to do that necessarily because then you're, the tax rate's too high. So, you know, look at that too, but you know, I mean, my municipal tax rate is $400 on my taxes. So I'm not really worried about that. It's the school. That's the big number on my taxes. So, um, you know, I'm saying, I think same for, for all of us. Yeah. So the, the, the money we're, we're saving right now is to make sure that, you know, and I think the, the, the tax is being paid and the 1% report that we got looks like we're, we're on track. Uh, the next 1% payment, um, I think that's July or August, I'd have to ask Carrie, but that's going to be more telling about how we're going yeah. next year than anything else. That, yeah, that will affect the FY21 budget. Or whatever. Yeah. Right. That's going to have the impact on it. That, that, because our, our town budget is, uh, oh, motion um, $2.7 million, $1.2 million is raised by taxes and another $1 million comes from the local 1% option. So without wow. the 1% option, that changes the tax burden on everybody else. So wow. that's important. So that's, that's why they are stopping the spending because we, we want to make sure that if, you know, if we need to, we can, we can recover from that. So how, how will that transfer be made from this year's general fund then if it all goes into the capital improvement fund? You don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's outside my area of expertise. <laughs> okay. Different office. Thanks. <laughs> Maybe I'll ask. Yeah, you can... Uh... You can, you can try Carrie, Dana, or, or just maybe someone on the select board. <laughs> yep. I'm, I'm just curious now because my, um, my budget brain uh, doesn't know how to process the uh, somewhat um, conflicting information that Bill has in his understanding. So there, there's, there, there, there's a lot, there's, there's, there's money that comes in, there's money that goes out, and somewhere in the middle magic happens. Like that's kind of what I know. Right, and uh, it's my business to make sure that no funny business happens. Well, and, you know, so. and we have, we have uh, Andrew Peich. We have Ian Peich that does our auditing for us every year too. So he's he's a he's a you know make sure he's on top of that as well. And you know, and and I know that Kirsten and and you know would call him and Carrie would call him when they they have questions. Say, okay, so how do I handle this? And he can give some guidance on the best way to do that. So, do you know what we're trying to achieve as a uh, as a target for the um, uh, for the reserve? No. Okay. Well, for our opening fund? Uh, just a uh, reserve carryover from uh, this year's general fund that the freeze is implemented to. I, I, I don't know. There, there really wasn't, when they talked about it, it was just kind of like, a, we're going to stop spending. And, let, you know, the only thing you can, you know, if you have an expense, you need to come to the board and ask us. And then if we approve it, you can go forward. And that's kind of basically been it. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Sure. All right, let's, we've been carrying on for quite a while here. Let's uh, go to the minutes of April 23rd and, and wrap this puppy up. I've got some corrections. Uh, Mary, Mary Beth, are you? Sorry, sorry, I was muted. Can I, um, I have one short discussion before we do the minutes? Short discussion? Yeah, yeah. Um, so on what? On what? On uh, ethics, <laughs> the form that we signed, and uh, the town ethics. Um, sorry, it's not on the agenda, but I've just been thinking recently. Um, Bill, you know the uh, Ranbury Road project. Yes. I work for Otter Creek Engineering, as you guys know, and we're working on a the project with the town. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to let everyone know that I'm working on the project. Um, and air any uh, ethics, you know, discussions. I don't know if I should, I mean, the select board knows, Bill knows, but I just wanted to make it clear to everyone. Uh, Mary Beth, what's your role? 
Um, so I'm doing administrative work and I may go out um, and help the resident on the project. So it's starting probably in August. So um, yeah, so I'm not, you know, the, there's a different project manager, but I'm going to be helping, you know, mostly administratively with the project um, okay. as, as the town's representative for the project with the contractor. Okay. Point, the, contract, okay. the contract's approved, the contract signed. So, I mean, there's no, there's, I don't, I don't like any, any issue on, on our end with that. Right, but you did the right thing by bringing it right. to our attention. Yeah. Conflict of interest. I, I'm not clear yeah. on, on what the project is. Her voice is not coming through to me. We're we're digging. We're adding a water, a municipal water line down Ranbury Road. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Jim, did you did you want to say something? I saw you light up there for a second. No. Okay. All right. Just checking. Just checking. Okay. Let's go back to the minutes of April twenty third. Motion to approve the minutes of April 23rd. Thanks, Dana. Second. Thanks, Sherman. I have some, uh, I think, typos to bring to your attention, if I may. Yep, go ahead, Norm. On the first page, under new business, the fourth um, bullet says there is no zooming in Rutland Town. Should that be zoning? Well, there is zooming, but that should be zoning. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're right. Done? You're right. Okay. Thank you. Um, on the next page, I have a question for you, Barbara. Under the second bullet, um, something was not clear to me. Um, it said the select board has not decided if they want to intervene with the process. The new policies were communicated. The board voted four to one to send the letter. And I don't know whether that was our letter or a different letter. Uh, our letter, it was a letter that the select board um, did with myself. Yeah, there's, there's only one letter. Was it the letter? Um, I sent you a copy of it. I sent everybody a copy of it. So they, they voted to authorize you to send the letter that would contain the comments on um, that new project. Pretty much, the letter hadn't been written yet when they did the four to one vote. The, the four to one is to put together and send a letter. Okay, fine, which just wasn't clear the way it was there. Um, I think it's fine. Okay, uh, old business. Um, second bullet, third subparagraph, beginning Mr. Hall discussed Karis Reels, and it says ANDS. I think it should be and said, the S should be deleted. Mm hmm yeah, good. Okay, and let me see if there's another one. Oh, at the top of that paragraph, first bullet, Mr. Hunter discussed doing sites visits or site visits? Yeah, it should be just site. That's all for my nitpicking. That's all I have. That's pretty good. Thanks. Thank you. Did you, get, did you get those, Bill? I did. I have two on page one. Under new business, one, two, three, four, five, sixth bullet. I think it should be discussed, not discusses. Yes. Agreed. Uh, and the second is. Uh, actually, is that a typo? I don't know. Uh, I have a bullet circled. Uh, the land use map was added to the town plan. Oh, I know what it was. <clears throat> um, under new business, it's irrelevant because these were the points that uh, you were bringing forth from the discussion at the select board meeting, I think, Barbara. Mm -hmm. But it's not just that the land use map was added but the land use map was changed mm -hmm. and added. Yeah. So uh, what I have as a note is that it was, it was changed and added because uh, it being, uh, I'm not sure, uh, wasn't it always part of the um, town plan? It just- Well, we, um, 
what happened is that um, they wanted to pass the town plan in 2016, I think. Yep. Um, and and but they didn't have time to work on the map, the land use map at that point. So they went ahead and adopted the town plan, and then the planning commission did change the land use map, and the town plan was readopted uh, a couple years after that. I, I think for clarity purposes, it, it should state that the land use map was changed. And I, I mean, anybody's reading the minutes because the land use map, that was one of the things why the land use map was added because we were working on changes. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah um, that's that's up, up to someone above my pre grade for determining that. That was my only comment. No, that's a good one. That's a good one. Thank you. Okay, any others? Looking at faces, I don't see anybody. Okay, um, so um, I'll make a motion to um, uh, to approve the minutes with uh, corrections. Sherman, did you do yes, the second? Yes, I'll second it. Okay, okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. So good. Um, anything else for this meeting? Yeah. Did I hear that the next meeting is going to be in person on the fourth? We yeah. don't know that for sure, right, Bill? No, we, we're not sure yet. Okay, I must have misunderstood. Thank you. There, there is, is some there discussion about about maybe doing some select board meetings in person. I think um, I don't know. We're, we're kind of large, um, so. As long as the number is under 10 and you ensure physical distancing with uh, appropriate face coverings, uh, you can have a meeting of 10 or fewer people. Yeah, yeah, I know that. I'm, I'm not, as yeah. As long as the space is rated for, uh, what is it, 25% of physical occupancy. Right, I'm not sure we meet that. I'm not sure I'm, I'm comfortable um, even trying to meet that. So if we... Yeah. Uh, if we don't use Zoom, we lose Bill's uh, expertise that he exhibited tonight. <laughs> is the screen sharing? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot better than that. The the meeting rooms technology. Yes. <laughs> oh, I, I got some other tricks too. More. Good. <laughs> Hold on. Wait, ready? Wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Do you have themes for all of us, or you, you think uh, of these? No, it's a little weird with the lights off, but no. <laughs> I, I decided that I was too far in the weeds. <laughs> got a beach. Oh. Well, I got, I got a beach. There we go. Is Boardman Hill uh, Farm? Well, not Boardman no, Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Leave a farm on Boardman Hill Road. <laughs> and there's still oh, snow, yeah. just like there yeah. is. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Um, uh, we'll, we'll try to get uh, we'll try to get some railroad people in for the fourth. And meantime, we've all got some homework with the map. And Norm, you look like you're about. You want to say something, but no. Okay. Okay. All right. Anyone want to move to adjourn? I so move. Okay. Uh, let's give it to Jim. And thank you all. Okay.